Hi everybody, I'm back. And today what we're going to be doing, this is the day before Labor Day. So, I'm having a party. We're going to be doing pork spare ribs on the smoker. So, with this today, I'm going to get set up and I'll show you what I'm doing. Very easy, this is a very, just time consuming, but this is a very easy thing to make. Um, if you have a smoker, um, if you don't have a smoker, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You can do it. But it's just a little bit more difficult to do it. You have to take a different step. So anyway, we'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back. Now I've got a nice aluminum sheet pan, and I use that because it's just easy to for a nice stable uh, platform for carrying the spare ribs out. And also, I'm going to be letting them sit in tin foil with all the seasoning on it for a while. Um, when I say a while. Right now, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. I plan on getting the ribs on the grill by noon. Well, hi, everybody. Today, we're going to make fresh marinara sauce. Doesn't that sound wonderful? I have so many veggies coming in from the garden, and people ask me all the time, what do I do with all these vegetables? Well, I give away 90% of them. Um, I grow a tremendous amount in a very small space, and it's way more than I can use. I give a lot to my family and my friends. And even my neighbors, I drop off the bags of vegetables to them also. But today, we're going to take, and I'm going to show you this real quick. But we've got all these veggies that I just harvested, and I just brought these in the house. So, I mean, I just, these are fresh picked. I mean, you can't get any fresher. They just came off all the bushes and everything. So, we've got eggplant, we've got tomatoes, and we've got fresh bell peppers. And look at the size of these things. These are just, oh, just wonderful. And the tomatoes, I mean, look how beautiful these tomatoes are. They're just gorgeous. So I've got orange tomatoes, I've got red tomatoes, we've got red bell pepper, we've got yellow bell pepper, and we have eggplant. And we're gonna add an onion and garlic, and we're gonna make ourselves a fresh marinara sauce. I'm gonna freeze all the extra stuff into smaller containers that I can use individually as I need them. And the rest we'll use tonight probably for a dinner. So, stick with us today and let's make some marinara sauce. And this is keto friendly and paleo friendly, so keep that in mind. Okay, we're back. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing some chopping. And very easily, we just chop it right in half, take that center and peel it up. Look how easy that was to peel that. Now, keep in mind that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roast the tomatoes, the eggplant, and the peppers before I make them into sauce. So I'm gonna be taking all these and they're all gonna go onto sheet pans and I'm gonna put them in my oven. Now keep in mind that I have a convection oven so I'm gonna be putting it at 350. I'm gonna be using the convection portion of it so it'll take less time. And I'm gonna let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour so cook it into really nice, it gets nice and roasted. Um, we'll take a look at it and see if we're getting enough blistering on everything and enough little charring that's what we're looking for. And once that's there, we're going to put everything in the pot, we'll cook it down, and then we're going to blend it, and we're going to have a nice marinara sauce for dinner tonight. So stick with us, and like I said, all you do for the, the peppers is cut them in half, and I tap out the uh, seeds, and I take the pith. So I pull that pith out, just like that, real quick. That's very nice and easy. Do a second one, just like that. Take your finger like so. I take my hand over the sink because I use my sink right next to me, but I just peel that pith out. And it's that quick and that easy. So, with the tomatoes, I just take the stem side and see how that one's got a little bit of a black mark in it? So, we're going to cut that out. And that was probably some kind of a insect that had gotten into there. But now, look at the rest of this. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? So, same thing with these. We're going to be cutting the tops off them. We're going to put them face down to cook. So we're going to be putting these face down on our pan. So it'll look like that on our pan. So like I said, we're going to be taking the pan. We're taking our tomatoes and we slice that top off. We're just going to lay them face down and we're going to roast them. And then we'll be back. So once these are all roasted, we'll be back. And I'll show you. We'll put everything into the pot and we'll start getting it going. It's kind of a rainy day, cold day, beginning of fall. This is a good project for me today to do. So we'll be back. Stick with us. Okay, well, we just finished roasting all our vegetables. So let me pull these out and you can see, oh, look at that steam coming off of there. Just wonderful. And we've got them just how we want them. So as we're looking at these, 
you can see that I've, I've cooked them down. I've got them nice and browned out. So these are going to turn out really, really good. And we've done the same thing with our tomatoes and our, um, our uh, bell peppers and our eggplant. So here's our tomatoes. I'll set that here on the counter. It's a good thing I have quartz counters. You can set them right on the top. You won't them. And then there's our eggplant. Okay, so we are going to be putting all this stuff inside the pot and uh, we'll be cooking it along. But this is the pot we're going to be using. We're going to start placing this. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is setting these off to the side and let them cool off a little bit. Then I'm going to take the pot. We'll be right back. I'm going to add the oil. Then we're going to add the onion and garlic. So we're going to be chopping up some onion. Then we're going to be doing the uh, garlic also. So be right back. Okay, I'm back, folks. And one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to, I've got two Vidalia onions. And I recommend you use a sweet onion. Oh, see how that one's got a bad spot? So we're just going to cut that right out of there. And then we're going to slice these up. And this is going to go into our pot first. We're going to put oil and we're going to do the onion. We're going to saute the onion and clarify it. Once it's clarified, we're going to add our garlic. So for our garlic, I've got a quarter cup of garlic that we're going to be using. I've got a quarter cup of olive oil that I've already poured out. So this is a very easy recipe. We're also going to have a half a cup of basil. We're going to be using black pepper and you can put this into taste but I use a tablespoon for this large pot because it's a fairly large pot. And then I'm going to be adding kosher salt and ground cinnamon. So, and that cinnamon is my little trick. That's just something I add extra, it's mine. That's you know, something you don't have to do. But um, we'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and chop these onions up. And this isn't gonna take very long and I don't think you're really gonna wanna watch me just sit here and chop an onion because really not much to it. There's uh, just like this. And you don't even have to do it as small as I'm making them, quite honestly, because we're gonna be using an immersion blender to blend everything together to make it nice consistency it'll be nice and thick when it gets all done now if you don't have an immersion blender that's okay you can use a regular blender it's just gonna be a little more time consuming you may need a second pot so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take small batches put them in your blender blend it up transfer it to the new pot and do it until you get it all done so with that we'll be right back okay we're back folks and let me get a uh, two tool here and what we're going to do is I'm going to first take our oil. So we've got our oil and we've got our pot here. I'm going to add the oil to the pot and I'm going to bring it up to temperature. <clears throat> I'm using a medium low heat. <clears throat> Excuse me. On my stove I'm using an electric stove so I've got to set it at about three. So that's kind of up to you where you where your works best but you're lot medium heat. And um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to add the onion then I'm going to add the garlic and uh, we'll be putting it in from there. But you can see how the onion is of just a rough chop. So I've just got a rough chop on the onion. Um, again, like I say, we're going to blend this later on to get it all back together. So stay tuned. Okay, we're back. We've got our oil bringing up to heat. We're going to take, start taking our onion and you can hear the little sizzle going in there. So we're putting all our onion in. And the nice thing about this recipe, it is such an easy recipe to do. And the majority of the stuff you could actually make or grow in your own garden if you really want to. I didn't grow the onions this year. Um, I did not, I just decided that I wasn't going to grow onions and spend the, the space and time on them. <clears throat> but, I, but I have in the past, and I grow garlic every year. Um, the garlic I'm using currently, though, came from the store. It was a minced garlic from the store, which is a convenience. And um, the other reason is I've used up all the garlic that I had grown this spring. And so I probably should grow a little bit more next time, maybe. So anyway, the, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clarifying the onions. We're going to be cooking these down. So when they start getting cooked down a little bit more, I'll come back. And then we'll add the, the garlic and we'll go on from there. Okay, we're back. I'm going to turn my fan off for a second. It makes it a little bit difficult to hear when I've got that fan on. But you can see the onions, how I've got them all nice and clarified. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our garlic. 
Now, the one thing to keep in mind about this garlic, and it's very important, is that you do not want this to burn. So we're now going to be browning up the garlic along with the onions. And once this gets nice and browned up, and again, you have to be very careful so we don't get this let it burn, we're just going to brown it. We're going to brown it up, and then we're going to add all the other ingredients. So all the ingredients will go inside the pot, then we're going to let this simmer on low for about two hours. At that point, then we're going to go ahead and blend it, and we're going to let it cook for about another hour roughly to let it nice thicken up, and it'll be our sauce for tonight. So with that, we'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back, and it doesn't take very long for that garlic to brown up. So just so you know that this is a really quick process, I only had this camera off for maybe maybe a minute and a half. So we're just at that stage where this is really going to be right nice and browned up. You can smell that nut nuttiness coming off of it. It's just delicious smell. So with that, I'm going to start adding all the other ingredients. I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to slide in the peppers. And don't worry about the skins or anything. And I did drain off the excess water and moisture off of the peppers, the uh, eggplant, and the uh, tomatoes because they do release a lot of water. So I got rid of that. So there goes our peppers. Now we'll add our tomatoes. And there's a little bit of juice left in here that does have good flavor. But I am going to be cooking a lot of this off and you know, reducing it down. So we're going to add our tomatoes. Oh, this is smelling so good. If you could just be in my house and smell this. It just smells absolutely wonderful. And then our last thing is going to be our eggplant. Now our eggplant, I cooked onto a grated um, pan because I wanted to keep it up out of the water because these eggplant produces a tremendous amount of water. But the nice thing about eggplant is that this is going to make it nice and creamy. So when we blend this, our sauce is going to be a nice creamy sauce without having to add any type of dairy or anything along that line. So we've got that in there, the last little bit. We'll pour that last little bit of water in there too. We'll use that moisture up. So that's what our pot looks like. We're going to let this cook and it's going to reduce and cook down and it's going to be about two hours. So we're going to put that down on low simmer. I'm going to slide my pot off to the side. And the reason I do that, just so you can see what I've done here, but I move that pot off to the side so that it won't um, burn on the bottom. It'll rotate. So it helps the, the liquid move around. So we'll be back in a little while and we'll progress with it. Okay, we're back and what I'm going to do is start adding all the rest of the ingredients in here to let this simmer. So we're going to do a uh, teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to add in next uh, two tablespoons of kosher salt. And that might seem like a lot, but it's really not because there has no salt been added to this prior to this. We're going to use a teaspoon of cinnamon. And this is my little uh, added thing that I put in there, but this just adds a little something something to it. And then we're going to also put in our basil, and we have a half a cup of basil. So this is a pretty simple recipe. It doesn't require a whole lot of stuff, and uh, it makes a very, very delicious sauce. This marinara sauce is just delicious. And you can use it as a base for meat sauce, too, if you want to make a meat sauce with it. You could add meat to it or meatballs, which I usually do if I'm going to do it. And uh, then you use the marinara sauce over top of the meatballs. But anyway, this is going to be just wonderful. And I may have to switch my spatula over to a wooden spoon now because I don't think this is going to move this around very well. So I'll probably be switching this out and getting a wooden spoon out. But we'll be back when this gets starts cooked down. It's going to be about two hours from now. So we'll see you then. Okay, everybody, we're back again, and we've get, been cooking this for about two hours, and this is what it's looking like, so you can get a good look at what this is looking like right now. It's all coming together so nicely. Oh, the, the smell off of it, just delicious.
So, I'm going to use my immersion blender. Now I've got an immersion blender. Now if you don't have one, like I said, you can take, um, let this sit off to the side, get another pot, and start putting it into a uh, blender a little bit at a time, and then pour it into the other pot until it's all done. It'll only take you probably all oh, five or six batches. So anyway, <clears throat> you can do that also. But I'm going to use this immersion blender. Now the key to this, one, you see that I put my apron on because it does splatter sometimes. You just put it inside and work its way down. This is the way I found to get this to work the best. And you just keep going around everywhere and I go all the way around the pot and try to get all the big pieces into the immersion blender so it just kind of grinds it up really quick. Once that's done, we're then going to keep blending until this is completely blended up. Like I said, we're going to cook this for about another hour afterwards to thicken it all up. And this is going to be a wonderful sauce. And that added eggplant, you can already see, you can see how creamy that's starting to get? And then we don't even have to add any kind of dairy to this at all. So for those of you that are vegetarian or vegan, this is a perfect meal for you to make. Um, and it uses up your veggies in the garden in a very economical way. So. With the rest of this, I'm just going to keep going through here and blending. And it's a bit noisy, so I'll try to keep it, I'll try to keep it down. And I just kind of run this all the way around until we get this all blended nice and smooth. So we'll be back shortly. We're getting closer to this being all blended up now, so you can kind of see. And one of the things you want to do is make sure you reduce that heat down to very low because otherwise it'll splatter and you're going to have to keep stirring this too. See how creamy the sauce is starting to get. this cook for about another hour and it'll reduce down a little bit more and then we're gonna have a sauce okay we're back and you can see I take my and my apron off now and I'm gonna open the pot with the lid away from me just so I don't get splattered in case this is still bubbling but I just just turned the heat off and you can see how nice and thick this is now so this is the consistency I was looking for so with that, I'm probably going to put it over shirataki noodles tonight. Um, those are a noodle that um, I really like. They work really well and they don't have any carbs in them at all. So that's kind of the way I, I'm going about it. Um, you can also use any kind of pasta that you'd like, things like that. I mean, whatever, whatever you desire, whatever feels good for you. Uh, me personally, that's probably what I'll be using it on. Um, I also use a vegetable pasta that I buy quite a bit of also and I'm looking into buying some of the chickpea pasta I don't know if anybody's used it before um, but it's one of those things I'm looking at right now and I'll probably buy some of that to try it out and see how it does so with that thank you very much I appreciate you watching our show and uh, come back again but this is our nice garden fresh marinara sauce thanks for watching have a great day